So as we mentioned in our previous two Ryzen 2700X videos, we haven't had a whole lot of time with the chip. So today we wanna to do a little bit more in-depth testing with seeing what kind of overclock we can get with the CPU when it is on just the star cooler. How did it, it broke into, jeez, how did it? Gosh dang, this was a review sample too. We have to like send this back. Did, did you guys try to like delid this or something? Shouldn't be able to do this. What the heck? Was this like, I thought these things were soldered. Look at that end. This thing's, what the frick, how? How did this happen? Rickus, what, what did you guys do? You you guys got this. I was I was still in America, what the heck happened? I didn't touch it, I just edited the video. Who who did, okay, so you didn't touch it, Reese. Was it Tank? Was Did Tank only do the testing? As far as I know. I go, I go away to America for how long? And you guys can't even keep the freaking PC parts together? Are you still rolling? Yeah. Can you can you cut please? Okay, so it's a little while later. We have the system set up. We've got the 2700X set up on the test bench. Right now it's currently running stock on the default cooler. As you can see, it's the Wraith Prism. It's got all of the fancy RGBs, everything set up. And we're gonna be just checking out how it runs in a couple of programs, mainly Cinebench R15 and then HWBOTS X265 encoder because that will allow us to get a pretty good base level of whether or not, uh, what the performance difference is like, but then also the stability of the overclock because I've noticed that HWBOTS overclocking, uh, at least their, their um, benchmarking tool, really bricks my CPUs if I don't have a stable overclock. So uh, we're, we're just gonna run everything at stock right now. So you can see we have Ryzen Master pulled up. We have, we're running three, gig, three to four gigahertz. The temperatures are 47C at stock. Um, it's running on the stock thermal pace. So everything is basically what what type of overclock can you get with the system right out of the box? This is this is exactly how you basically will experience it and we can kind of just check the performance with it right now. So we're just going to let this run and then we'll come back after everything. Okay, so our stock Cinebench score is 1715 on multi-core. Now it's time for HWBOTS X265. We should also monitor uh we should have been monitoring the CPU core. So we're gonna set this 64-bit 1080p. We're gonna do real-time testing. There we go. And now we're just gonna watch the clock speeds and the temperatures on everything. We have 3950 all core, 3975 with XFR. And then temperatures are 68 uh, degrees Celsius. It looks like it's settling at about like 3925, 3950, somewhere in there on all eight cores. Yeah, the temperature is peaking up to 70 degrees Celsius. And there we have the benchmark done, 39.25 FPS on that 1080p render, which is actually pretty good since it doesn't have quick sync like Intel does. It's a pretty decent score. Okay, so that, that's pretty uh, pretty standard. We're, we're done with the stock everything. So now it's time to go into the settings and to overclock this thing. Now with those basic temperatures of like 69 to 71 degrees, that's quite high for what it is right now. It's not even hitting four gigahertz and the temps are, are really high up there. So we're gonna see if we can maybe uh, set the voltage to something static like 1.275 and see if we can get something like a flat four gigahertz out of it. Hopefully that'll work. If not, then we'll obviously have to increase the voltage and get a lot higher temperatures. So let's just try a flat four gigahertz and then we'll increase the voltage to or decrease it rather, 1.275. I'm not entirely sure that's gonna work. Okay, now we have everything to four gigahertz, 1.275 volts. Now it's time to run the benchmark test, just at a flat four gigahertz to see uh, what the improvement is. Run, monitor attempts. 68 so far, 69.63. And again, this we haven't upped the fan speed or anything. This is just stock fan speeds. We're gonna see what we can do on stock and then probably take it up to 100% fan speed right after. So we're reaching 77.38, 77.5, probably gonna hit 79 by the time this is over, maybe even 80. 79.5, 79.5 is what we hit on the temperatures, but we've got a little bit of increased score on Cinebench. We went from, I think it was 1715 yeah, 1715 to 1730. So just locking everything to four gigahertz instead of having it fluctuate with XFR gives a slightly better performance. And then let's go ahead and do this uh, X265 render, which as I've mentioned earlier in the video, usually bricks the CPU or not bricks, but shuts down the system if the overclock isn't stable. Real time and run. Okay, we're maintaining four gigs, 75C 
is basically what we're hitting. Might even get up to 78 by the time this is over. All right, 39.839 is our average, which is 0.4 FPS higher. So again, this is all on 1.275 volts. We dropped the voltage because it was running at 1.35 just on stock. Now it's time to see if we can maybe increase the core clock, maybe try to get 4.1, 4.2 on the same voltage. Probably not gonna happen. Um, but if it does, then this is a pretty decent chip. Uh, if it doesn't, then we're gonna have to increase the voltage, which with where the temperatures are now, doesn't make me too happy. Let's just go for straight 4,200 megahertz. Changing nothing besides the multiplier. All right, so that didn't work. We need to up the voltage. It's not a terrible deal. We'll just get it figured out. I didn't figure it should work anyways. That would be a great voltage for 4.2 gigahertz on Ryzen, uh, but we'll, we'll increase to 1.325 and see if it'll boot at that, that voltage. Increasing the voltage to 1.325 on 4.2 gigahertz. Okay, that booted, 1.325. I'm happy so far. Let's actually see if it can sustain a load at this point. Yep, 4.2 gigahertz, 1.325 volts, 50C basically at, at idle. Let's run that and let's watch the temperatures. Already dead. Okay. Clearly cannot maintain that. Let's try 1.35. All right. It's definitely further than it was before, but still no bueno. Okay. Let's go to 1.375. Just got to keep going up until it sticks. It won't fry. 1.375 volts is not going to fry anything. The only thing it'll do is probably force me to turn the fan speed up which is not something I want to do. Cause I, I just want to test everything at like fully stock, see where yeah. we can get at stock. We might be able to hit 4.3. We'll have to see how this does on 1.375 volts. And if it does okay, then we can maybe potentially up it to uh, 1.4 or it's 4.3. Okay, slightly further, 76 degrees, not even slightly, okay. <laughs> it does not like this voltage. 4.2 requires a lot. Like it seems like getting four gigahertz flat is pretty easy, but then XFR, if you have a decent enough cooling solution, you should actually even be able to go above four, four gigahertz just by default. Um, so yeah, I think AMD kind of really removed all of the overclocking headroom that we could potentially have with Ryzen 2, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. Obviously people want the ability to overclock their systems, but then at the same time, what does it say about AMD that they're all shipping mostly near the top of their range? That I think that says something good about AMD trying to focus on the consumer and actually provide us with a chip that is as good as it's really going to get. Uh, instead of being something that, like with Intel, you get crappy thermal interface material, and then you're also not anywhere near the capabilities of the chip typically with overclocking. Like, I think it's something like 98% of 8700Ks can hit 4.9 gigahertz, but yet, what's their boost? I think it's something like, I think the boost is 4.8. So, it can do 4.9 on all cores, but yet, Intel just doesn't really ship them that way. So this is 1.4 volts, trying to test it. 80C right off the bat, 90C, bricked, okay. I don't think we're gonna hit 4.2. I don't think we can do that on the stock cooler with the stock thermal paste. I think if we inc if we change the thermal paste for something that is a bit higher quality, say something from Thermal Grizzly or even probably Arctic MX4 instead of the stock stuff that Intel or AMD is including rather, um, we'd probably be in a better place. But since we're using everything stock and I'm not even changing the fan speeds, it's it's not gonna be great. Cause I think realistically, like with overclocking. I, I personally don't like running my fans at full bore. Sure, for testing to see how high you can hit a frequency on it is great, but then at the same time, like my typical use case is I don't want it this high because I, uh, let's lower it to 1.375. I don't want the fan speed way too high because then that doesn't allow me to enjoy my experience or it reduces the lifespan of the product. And so trying to overclock it to a, something that's reasonable that it can maintain on, you know, a stock fan level or even a slightly more aggressive fan level, but not something that will ever hit 100%. Because as soon as you're doing 100% overclocking, to me, that kind of de defeats the purpose of like, uh, like, Basically, what people are going to use the 2700X for is mostly like productivity stuff, and you need the utmost stability. And trying to force everything out of your system is not really stable. It's it's more of a, a fun thing to do, and I, I guess I'm just trying to find out what's stable. What can you do? Stock cooler, stock heatsink, and just figure out where where's the balance here. And if we can't do 4.1 at 1.375, then I think that 4 gigahertz at 1.3 volts is honestly as good as it. Wait, I think we did. 1.275. Yeah, four gigahertz at 1.275 volts is more than enough for me. And honestly, I'd rather leave it on the on the default because then it can boost higher than 
than four gigahertz as long as I change the cooler. Okay, we're on 4.1, 1.375. The default temperature, or the idle temperature is around 50 degrees, 90 degrees. But at least it's running at this point. 90.5, 90.75, 90, yeah. So about 91, 92 degrees is gonna be its peak here. Okay, we hit 93 degrees, which is quite high. And then the performance is 1771. 17 point, 1771 puts it another uh, 41 points higher than previously. The original was 1715, so that's okay. Um, it's a moderate improvement. We've gotten an additional 56 points out of Cinebench by just doing a modest overclock. All right, and then our, there our average FPS was 40.65, which is 0.8 FPS higher. So basically from stock to four gigahertz, we saw a modest improvement. And then from four to 4.1 gigahertz, we actually saw double the improvement that we saw from stock to the 4.0 overclock. So this, this is okay. It hit 93 degrees, which is way too high. So I think the, the last thing that I really wanna do with this, this video is to check and see if we do increase the fan speed, can we keep the temperatures down to something that's a lot more reasonable than let's say 93 degrees. Obviously you're not gonna be hitting this during gaming because it doesn't stress the CPU out to 100% on all cores and threads. But at the same time, stress testing it is usually the best way for you to find out where your system is gonna be stable. So let's CPU, let's smart fan mode. Let's give it a more aggressive curve. Let's have it hit 100% at 80 degrees. 70% at 60 degrees. And then basically off when it hits zero. <laughs> that, that looks good to me. All right, then save. So a mostly slow ramp, and then as soon as it starts getting to somewhere where it, it, it's way too hot, It'll, it'll ramp up the speed quite a bit. And then at 80 degrees, it'll be 100%. Okay, 70 degrees, 80 degrees, 81.75. It should be ramping up to 100%. 87, 88, 88, 89. 93 is what we were at earlier. So, I mean, we are saving a few temperatures. <laughs> That's a word. We're saving some few temperatures. Okay, 91, 91 is the peak here on this test. So that means we save two whole temperatures, which isn't, isn't great by just ramping up the fan speed. So overall, um, you know, you can get modest improvements on your 2700X. This obviously wasn't a super in-depth test. All, all I was really testing and the thing that I wanted to find out is what the average person can get. If you're gonna be running this with the stock cooler, with the stock thermal paste, if you don't wanna change anything out, what's the best you can do? And honestly, I wouldn't recommend 4.1 gigahertz. I'd either say leave it at stock or go to four, four gigahertz and try 1.3 volts, 1.275. Somewhere in that range will allow you to have decent temperatures with an okay overclock that's gonna be slightly better than stock, but more less like AMD's done a great job with the 2700X kind of giving it all it can get out of the factory which is respectable and is something that I, I think is I, I can appreciate even though I do like overclocking even when it's nice on the 8700K when you see oh, I can get this to 5.3 as long as I cool it properly that's always fun getting those extra hundreds of megahertz out of it but at the same time it's not necessarily something that's really necessary for the average consumer and I think AMD even with the price points is indicating that this is a consumer level product, not something necessarily meant for enthusiasts, which I definitely appreciate. Anyways, now I'm gonna wrap this video up there. Big thanks to MSI South Africa for sending us the gaming M7 motherboard for us to check, test everything out on, and also the 2700X to do all of our testing. Guys, be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you're looking to pick up any AMD Ryzen stuff, X470 boards, B 450 boards when they launch, or even the new processors. You can use our Amazon affiliate code or new egg affiliate code that's in the video description. It gives us a small kickback that helps us out a lot and keeps everything going around here. Anyways, I am Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers. We have to pay for this.